And I now get to introduce uh, the final recipient of our honorary degrees. Dr. Freeman Rabowski has been the president of the University of Maryland, Baltimore County since 1992. He is a consultant on science and math education to national agencies, universities, and school systems. Dr. Rabowski was named by President Obama to chair the President's Advisory Commission on Educational Excellence for African Americans. He was named one of the 100 most influential people in the world by Time Magazine and one of America's best leaders by US News and World Reports. Dr. Rabowski has received numerous awards, including the Carnegie Corporation's Academic Leadership Award and the Heinz Award for contributions to improving the human condition. More than 20 universities have bestowed honorary degrees on him, including Harvard, Princeton, Duke, North Carolina, and Georgetown. His university has been recognized as a model for inclusive excellence by publications such as US News. Dr. Rabowski grew up in segregated Birmingham, Alabama. In 1963, when he was 12, he saw his friends readying for the Children's Crusade March for Civil Rights, and he joined. As he got swept up in a mass arrest, Birmingham's notorious police chief, Bull Connor, spat on him. The jail guards locked the young freedom marches in with hardened criminals for five terrifying days and nights. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a march of parents to the jail, telling the parents and children, what you do on this day will have an impact on generations as yet unborn. Outrage at the brutality against Birmingham children helped build national pressure for laws banning racial discrimination. And that outcome helped to form Freeman Rabowski's life mission. He said that the experience taught him that the more we expect of children, the more they can do. President Yeager had the good fortune of working with Dr. Rabowski at the University of Maryland and Baltimore campus for 20 years, and the two developed a very close friendship that continues today. David will tell you that freedom embodies the essentials for success as a strong leader, a strong moral compass that guides his action, a commitment to doing the right thing, not the easy thing, and a deep understanding of the importance of diversity in our society and especially in higher education. Dr. Rabowski firmly believes that hard work is the key to success and that change is not only inevitable, it is to be embraced. Here at the University of the Arts, both of those ideas are fundamental to our own beliefs and our own values. I ask President Yeager to join me for the awarding of the honorary degree of fine arts and I call on Dr. Freeman Rabowski to come forward to receive the degree. By virtue of the authority delegated to me by the Board of Trustees of the University of the Arts from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, I hereby confer upon Dr. Freeman Rabowski the degree of Doctor of Fine Arts, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. I'm going to do something a bit different, and in the spirit of David Yeager, a bit unpredictable. I'm going to ask if someone can turn the lights up for me. I love the turning the lights down, but if anybody can turn the lights up in the audience, I want to see your faces as I talk. Hello there to all of you. Hello. You know, after listening to that wonderful poetry of Alicia and then having to follow both Little Miss Sunshine and Spider-Man. I am abs absolutely in awe. Would you give the other two honorary degree recipients another round of applause?
William Carlos Williams once said that it's difficult to find news in poetry, and yet men and women die miserably every day because of a lack of what is found there. And so I begin with words from our beloved and now the late Maya Angelou, who spoke as the first woman ever at an, an installation of a US president as the first African American ever. And she looked into the eyes of America and said, lift up your eyes upon this day breaking for you. Give birth again to the dream. Women, children, men, take it, this dream, into the palms of your hands, mold it into the image of your most public self, sculpt it into the shape of your most private need. Here on the pulse of this new day, you may have the grace to look up and out and into your sister's eyes and into your brother's face and say simply, very simply with hope, good morning. Good morning to all of you and give poetry a round of applause. A hundred and twenty-five years ago, just a few years after the founding of this institution, another installation or inauguration of a college president was taking place in New England. And the speaker talked about the multiple roles of college and university presidents. And he said this, David, you must be a father and a mother, a mentor and protector to the students a brother and a sister and a loyal friend, that presidents touch students at every angle of their being, from intellect to heart, and that the eyes of a president are always the eyes of a friend, even when they must also be the eyes of a judge. He evoked the image of presidents as master builders master builders of young adults, calling these human beings the noblest edifices to come from the hands of any architect. And while Mark Twain, speaking at Trinity College in Connecticut that day, may not have envisioned such an innovative institution as the University of the Arts, his words speak volumes about the importance of the work of not just leaders of presidents, but of educators of the faculty. A few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of listening to David, who had come back, we would say, to home, to our campus. He had been invited by the arts to talk about the future of the arts. We know him to be somebody who knows how to push us to imagine. And he talked about high expectations and excellence, as you might expect. And as you've heard him here already say, the power of us rather than the power of me or of I, and the significance of community and of culture. You know, I took the, pre the, the, the opportunity to ask some of his colleagues thoughts about David. Because you see, once someone leaves an institution and they no longer have any authority over them, you really get to know what they think about that person. <laughs> so David, hold your horses here. Just stay in your seat. You're OK. You're all right. <laughs> My colleague, Priminda Jacob, who is the chair of arts, said this, just thinking about David, some masterful words, that artists specialize in the generation of ideas, that they bring the foresight to imagine our world differently, even before these ideas become technically possible. In fact, in every society, artists are living testaments to the value of having the freedom to explore. And when we think about David, we think about a leader who always creates that environment in which colleagues and students have that freedom to explore the possibilities. You know, interestingly enough, David and I came to UMBC at exactly the same time, that same year, 
at the same time that this new institution, 1987, and I watched him envisioning the possibilities for the arts on our campus. And what was so significant was that he did so much for the arts, but for the entire campus. And what you'll see over and over will be his broadening the thinking, his pushing us to the next level wherever he is. Interestingly enough, you heard them talking about my growing up in Birmingham and looking out the bars with other children, students, listening to Dr. King and our parents. We never could have imagined a world that looks like this, people from all over the world. I could never have imagined having somebody as close as a brother of another race. And that is the America that we want for all of our children. Interestingly enough, in the 60s, only 10% of Americans had completed a college degree. Only 10%. 11% of whites, 2% of blacks. They were only counting things in black and white. Today, we are up to 30% of Americans with a college degree, about 37% of whites. The fastest growing group, Hispanic, about 15% for blacks, about 20%. Native Americans, long below that, much below that. The Asian population, about 50%. Why do I tell you that? Because while we've made progress as a country in thinking about educating more people with degrees, those who are in the bottom quarter of our society, income-wise, still have only about a 10% chance right now of completing college. It is a statement about our democracy. It is a statement about all of the divisions in our country, whether thinking about race or ethnicity or gender or sexuality, religion or income, that we have these two groups. We have people considered mainstream and people who are not, and people who think that you're, there's something wrong if you're different. One of the significant points about the arts is that we now understand that we need citizens who have both the values and the habits of mind to appreciate differences among us, to find the common ground, to understand what it means to be human, and most important, again, to imagine the possibilities. This university has themes that are consistent with David's values, whether talking about flexibility in developing artists and designers as he created Design Lab on our campus and an imaging research center and a new MFA and increased the enrollment significantly, but imagining the possibilities to encouraging creativity, to connecting across disciplines as you talk about, to the importance of being in this wonderful, and as uh, we heard earlier, this, this sophisticated city of culture and art, with all of its challenges like America, with all the beauty of the arts here. And here you as a university sit in the middle of it, working to bring in people from all types of backgrounds, to elevate them and to create a cadre of creative leaders and broad thinkers who can strengthen not just Philadelphia, but the world. You know, significantly enough, if you were to ask me what I would say about this man, your new president. I would say that I would want you first to listen to another of his colleagues, a professor on our campus who has nothing to gain by complimenting him. He, she can say whatever she wants to say. Her name is Kathy O'Dell. And, and she wrote these words just very easily. She said, you know, I still consider David my mentor and would not consider making a professional move without consulting him first. His insights are deep and razor sharp, but more important to my mind is David's heart. I have never worked with anyone more able to attend to professional and emotional issues simultaneously and on balance. He cares about what is transpiring in one's life, whether it's a student, a faculty member, or a staff member, the disappointments, the joys, the deaths, the births, he asks, he listens, he supports. In fact, this combination of professional and personal attentiveness is rare, especially in such a high-powered, constantly energized, visionary thinker and doer. In just a word, he is extraordinary. And so what is the message today? It is that you have chosen someone who has high expectations, yes, of himself and of those around him, but at the core of his being, and I've known him through good and bad times, 
will be a determination to help this institution excel, will be a determination to ensure that you think more broadly and about yourselves in a grander way than you could ever have imagined as he listens to what you have to say. And at that very essence of the man will be a deep understanding of relationships. Relationships between the faculty and the students and staff, with the alumni, with the board, across, across public and private sectors. One thing that's not here that you might not know and the board would know is that this man was so energized that for a while I was okay with his going to our research park and leading a technology company. And so imagine this artist who not only can go to Hopkins and work in medicine, but can go into a technology company and help them understand exactly how you go about succeeding with values that any artist or humanist would be proud to be a part of. And finally, he knows what it means to push through when there's a struggle. There will be times, University of the Arts, when things may not go as well as you would help, would help, would hope they would, because life is like that for individuals, for families, for universities. There are up times, there are down times. But you have a leader who knows what it means to never give up. I am, my students know that I am studying French. My wife and I have given ourselves a, a wedding present, a, an anniversary present of studying French. You know, Americans study languages to pass tests. They rarely take the time to understand how you communicate with another culture. And so I quote the words of Apollinaire who said, le joie venait toujours après la peine. The joy comes after the struggle. Here is a leader who understands what it means to struggle, to embrace it, to support others in it, and to come out on the other side. I leave you with the words of St. Francis of Assisi, who said, he who works with his hands is a laborer. He who works with his hands and his heart is a craftsman. But he who works with his hands and his head and his heart is an artist. Congratulations to the University of the Arts and to you, David, for finding each other dreams and values. Thank you all very much.